service this morning, online and read at home. The church is closed now, sadly, for January, but it was felt to be the right thing to do. But we, of course, are able to record here our service this morning. And it's good to be together again. It is the second Sunday after Christmas, and we celebrate the Epiphany, which brings us into the new year. So the elders and I wish you all a happy new year, even though we start the year living under severe restrictions and rising infection rates. But thankfully, with an increasingly growing vaccination program, and we should pray for that and its success. So let us seek God's presence and blessing as we commit this time in worship and in praise and reflect on our words this morning. And today we follow some of the lectionary readings about the Epiphany. In our call to worship, the psalmist looks for qualities in a good king to enable the people to flourish and prosper. And in our main reflection in Matthew's Gospel, the account of the wise men involves searching, initially in the wrong place, for the newborn king. They eventually find him by following the star to Bethlehem, looking for direction God has for us. It's not always easy. Amen. Call to worship is Psalm 72, the great king. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores be, bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him with gifts. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. Amen and Amen. And the focus of this psalm is on the qualities that the Lord's anointed king should display in his character and his actions as the one entrusted by God with leadership of God's people. And this portrait is the ideal king and it foreshadows King Jesus who was and is greater than Solomon and David. And King Jesus is the one who uniquely fully revealed God's character to us in his life and his death and his resurrection. And we might join the psalmist in praising God for his justice, love and care, and ask God that our lives may display similar qualities. Amen. And now we come to our prayer of thanks and praise and the Lord's Prayer. Almighty God, we praise you that you are not silent, but choose to reveal yourself in the majesty of creation, the promises of scripture, and guidance of your Holy Spirit, and, supremely, in Jesus, the Word made flesh. We rejoice with the psalmist and the Magi who saw your light and answered your call. We thank you for all who reflect that light in their lives, especially those who have helped us on our way. We thank you that as we come to know you more, your light will increasingly shine through us. And faithful God, you have made us in your likeness. We confess that often we try to make you in our likeness and not follow the example of Jesus. We confess our mistakes and our wrong turnings. We make assumptions that cause us to trouble and heartache and bring pain to others. We confess we allow routine and the security of the known and our comforts to quench the spirit of adventure and wonder and journeying with you. Forgive us and help us, Lord. Help us to move forward on our life's journey, following you faithfully like that star. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is As with Gladness, Men of Old. The wise men, they follow the sign of a star, and so may we seek him throughout our life, our whole life. So, as with gladness, men of old. Where the child was. When they 
saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another way. Thanks be to God. Matthew seems to like the story of the Magi. He writes more words about them than the narrative of the birth of Jesus and doesn't mention the shepherds or the manger. But he wanted to tell the story of the star and those seeking the newborn king. It could be said that this is our story. We're all travellers, sojourners of a kind, inquiring, looking forward, trying new things. In order to find Jesus, every one of us needs direction, and God gives it. He guides, and the story of the Magi demonstrates this. And as we know so well, God uses the natural world to get our attention. Earth's glory and stars are quite outspoken. And Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. And God led the wise men, or Magi, to Jerusalem with a star. But to lead them to Jesus, he used something else. King Herod, who was deeply disturbed when he heard about this, he summoned the priests and teachers of the law and asked them where the Messiah was supposed to be born. They said, in Bethlehem in Judea. The star was enough to lead the Magi to Jerusalem, but ironically, it was at Herod's palace that it took the prophecy in the scriptures to lead them to Jesus in Bethlehem. People see signs of God every day. Sunsets to take your breath away, newborn babies that bring tears of joy, the first flowers of spring, and so much more. But do all who see the signs draw near to God? Many are content to simply see the signs. They do not realise that these riches of God are intended to turn us toward him. The Magi, however, understood the purpose of this sign. They followed the star to Jerusalem, where they heard about the scripture, and the prophecy told them where to find the Christ. It is interesting to note that the star appeared again after they learned about the prophecy. Then the star came and stood shining right over the place where the child was. It is as if the star sign and the word work together to bring the Magi to Jesus. The ultimate aim of all God's messages, both miraculous and written, is to shed the light of heaven on Jesus, his son. The Magi came to the house where the child was and saw him with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their gifts and gave him treasures of gold for a king, frankincense for a priest, and myrrh for his burial. And so, with their offering, they were the first Christian worshippers. The seekers of Christ had found him because they heeded the sign and believed the scripture. Noticeably absent at the house where Jesus was were the scholars of the law at the palace who had informed King Herod of the prophecy. They showed no interest in this. However, the wise men did. Their hearts were open to God's gift and the Magi were never the same again. They returned to their own country by another way. And the word way in the Greek here suggests a direction of life. It is as if the wise men went home as different men. So, so they were called by a sign, instructed by scripture, 
and in a dream directed home by God. It is as if all the forces of heaven cooperated to guide the Magi. Well, what can this say to us? God uses every possible means to communicate with you and with me. The wonders of nature call to us, the promises of scripture speak to us, and God himself reaches out to us. He is good with doors, opening and shutting them, and this is all because he wants to help us find the way to him, the way in life, and ultimately to find the way home. Amen. As we seek Jesus on that direction of life, on that way, on that journey, we ask God to guide us and lead us. And we know he will, and he will strengthen us and comfort us through the whole journey. So our next hymn is Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Life 
and love. As we gather, we remember that Jesus was born of Mary. He lived our common life on earth. He revealed the love of the Father. He showed us the way to live. He suffered and died for us. On the third day, God raised him from the dead and he is present with us through the Holy Spirit. In his presence and in the company of all God's people, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And for all this, we thank God and we join with all his people on earth in joyful thanks and praise. Amen. And let us read together the words of the institution of this feast as they are given by the Apostle Paul. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And now let us use the words of the next hymn to help us reflect on the bread and wine, <coughs> the body and the blood. <coughs> the hymn is, Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread.
us give thanks for the wine. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, O God, that you cause the vine to yield fruit. We bless you for Jesus, the true vine, whose blood was poured out for us. By your Holy Spirit, sanctify us and this wine, that the cup which we bless may be to us the communion of the blood of Christ, and that through abiding in him we may bear fruit that lasts. As we share the sufferings of Christ, so give us grace that we may know the power of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so when the disciples had given thanks, he gave the cup to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so the blood of Christ shed for us. Please take your wine and drink. in overcoming the various mutations of the virus. 
We think of ourselves and all that we must face in the coming days in the wake of the pandemic. We think of those in our church family who have died and we pray particularly for Margaret Wilson and the family following John's death and funeral last week. We think also of Samantha Coney, whose mother died recently and her funeral took place recently in Wales. And we think of also of the Sugden family. We heard recently that John Sugden has died. And we remember his wife Beryl and daughters Karen and Alison and their families. For these we pray for God's comfort to surround them at this time, in this new year. And help us to remember that in Jesus Christ we have hope that a virus cannot touch. Lord, our world needs a king. As the psalmist said, one that is endowed with your justice and as a royal son, a king with your righteousness. Thank you that this is our King Jesus. Lord, you called the Magi to travel far to seek the desire of nations, the child Jesus, the ruler of all, our servant King. Give us the courage to continue on our journeys when things are difficult, the wisdom to search and find you in unexpected places, the readiness to worship with humility and generosity, the willingness to change direction at your prompting, and serve you all our days. Amen. And so today, thank you for joining us online and reading at home. It has been good to be together, to worship and pray, and to reflect on God's guidance and presence with us. A final prayer before the blessing. Loving God when we feel anxious or lost, remind us that whatever happens, your presence is always with us, and we can look ahead to you. Be our guiding star as we travel through this difficult new year with trust and hope, even when we don't exactly know where we are heading. Amen. And so to you, our dear church family and friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace this new year. Amen.